Hello and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I am showing you what I brought back from Thailand. This is from Phuket and from Bangkok. To be fair, I bought like nothing in Phuket. If you are looking for the travel vlogs, I already put those up on Monday and Wednesday, one focusing on Phuket and one focusing on Bangkok, so definitely check those out. Here I am showing you what I brought back. Come here. All right, I've got my menace off the plastic bag, so now we can talk about it. So first up, uh, this is really lame, but I stole, well, I guess not stole, they would throw this away, the little toothpaste and toothbrush kit from Korean Air, as well as the little slippers they give you on the flight. These are things that they throw away, so it's not stealing. Just thought these were fun, and I kind of wanted to bring a set back. Also kind of on the boring side, I picked up these masks in, I think, Bangkok. They are really, 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 really lightweight, but they got really moist really quickly, which is a gross information for you. But they were overall a lot more comfortable than most American masks. I think it would be good for if you're just sitting around. I think when you are like walking around and running out of breath and respirating, not great for that, but otherwise I really like these. I mean, I'm sure you can't really get them in the US, but uh, they say they're made in Japan and they're by Unicharm, maybe. So then in Phuket, let me, Ugh. All I bought in Phuket was this bag actually. Oh, I guess I bought a pair of sunglasses, but only out of necessity. This is a waterproof bag. I just bought this one. It was only 200 baht, which is 596. I could have definitely probably bargained this down. But as I mentioned in my Bangkok video, when in a place like Thailand, I do not do bargaining because the wealth equality just is big enough between me and them that I don't tend to bargain. And I just bought one for when we were canoeing around. And also I got it because I do paddle, well, I paddleboard in theory here. I have a paddleboard, I aspire to use it more. I like the size of this cause it's like a little purse. And I also like the size for any time on a boat or something maybe, cause it's just like nice and small and it pops over like a shoulder bag. So that is why I picked this up. It was not just like, they kind of, they convinced a lot of people to buy these very silly phone cases where you could like use your phone and have it be water protected. That was not for me. So if you're in a situation where they're trying to get you to buy the silly clear thing, buy this, this is going to give you a lot more use in your lifetime than that silly clear iPhone thing that you bought for half the price of this, but you're gonna throw it away and it's more plastic in the landfill. So definitely I'm pretty excited about this. I also love the color. They had it in all sorts of colors. So this here is just a little bracelet that they gave us when we got to the resort. I wouldn't have bought this, but since I got it for free at the resort and it will remind me of the resort, I'm gonna put it in my like special things box from when I travel. I did buy some makeup there because I realized I didn't pack any makeup in my bag somehow. So I got this black eyeliner by Mistine. It's fine. It was only like $3, so I'm more than happy with it for that price. It's not great. I, it's like not black enough. It does, however, not budge. So that's a plus. And then I also bought this mascara, Double Perfect Mascara by Lifeford Paris. I have not seen this brand in the US. It's a double-sided wand mascara it's waterproof. I thought this was pretty great. It doesn't dry very quickly though. And that would be like my only critique of it. However, I think it's a pretty good mascara. So if I can find it online, I will link it down below. And then um, in the mascara was like, again, like a couple bucks. All of these were pretty cheap. It was actually really funny because they're really selling this in the States right now. I'm getting so many ads for the Superstay Vinyl Ink by Maybelline. Um, I picked it up there because I hadn't seen it before and I thought it was maybe unique to Southeast Asia. It is definitely not. I do like it and it was much cheaper there than it is in the US. So I did pick that up and then I have a couple other lip products that I have liked when I've worn them. I actually typically wear lip tints and um, like lip whips from Asia in general when you see me on camera, just because they're really light and they don't dry out my lips the way American formulas do. So typically I am wearing these. You'll see a lot more lip products that I picked up in Korea that are brands that I buy in the States all the time. But these were again, really, really cheap. I have one by Nari. One by Sassy that's called like Jolly Sweet Lip Tint. And then I have another one of their lip tints that is Sweet But Strong, number seven um, by Saucy. Again, if I can find these, I will link them down below. I like all of them, but I don't really have that much to say about them otherwise. Uh, I used them over the trip 
and they did everything I expect a limp tint or a lip mousse to do. So we'll kind of stay on the weird drugstore kick. So I bought these. So what these are, this is a little thing of baby powder you can carry in your purse. This is a bigger one and they're like scented. So the reason I picked these up is this was actually a request from a friend who wanted me to bring her back one of these because basically the way they use these is when it's really hot and humid. They rub this on their body and it helps them keep cool. I generally run pretty like warm. I'm always cold, but I run really warm as a person, if that makes sense. And so I picked up some of these for myself um, for the summer. And I also travel a lot of like very tropical humid places. And for some reason, I always find myself in the South in the summer. So I felt like these were a good pickup for me. I can see if they sell these, if you wanna give them a try, if they sell them in the US. Basically, I guess all of this stuff, if I can find it, I will link it down below, but no guarantees. It was not hot enough while we were there. Like it didn't have the humidity level that I think this would actually be helpful for. So I have not tried it out yet. This is also really boring, but uh, I've actually picked up three packs of these. I'm just, I'm actually using them currently because I am sick. These are called Strepsils. I highly recommend these cough drops. You can't buy them in the US as far as I know. Like you can order them on Amazon, but they're like 13 to like $20 for a pack versus when we were in Thailand, these were $3 each and I got the orange and the uh, menthol flavors. So definitely recommend these if you're not in the States. These are the best cough drops ever. Anytime I see them when I'm out of the country, I pick up a bunch because they are seriously superior to anything I've ever found in America. Other boring stuff, I guess. I got, I stole the dental kits from both of our hotels because these are usually things that they'll throw away. So I have more toothpaste and toothbrush sets. I think these are just nice if someone comes over to your place and they don't have their toothbrush or whatever. That's why I'm hoarding them. I'm just not used to being anywhere fancy enough to provide something like this. So I'm also just a little bit ridiculous. Huh, spooky. Oh, really? Okay, if you're gonna be here, I need you to sit. Hmm, how does that sound? Okay, now we will hop into, actually just kidding. I have one more boring thing. SPF formulas out of the US are so much better than what's available in the US. So I picked up some Bior, UV intensive Aurora B vitamin B and Yuzu orange sunscreen non-sticky water resistant my sister picked up some of this and I used it actually she picked up like a calming a skin calming one but she picked up some of this and it was the best sunscreen I have ever used so I of course went and picked some up all of me is kind of regretting not buying like two of these but it's okay we don't always need to hoard things I will travel out of the US again and I will be able to pick up better sunscreen than what's available in the US again and that was like five bucks again and it was, the prices there were wild. Okay, so that's like kind of all the boring stuff. Let's now hop into, I went to that Platinum Mall, which was a wholesale mall. It was really quite wild. So let's talk about what I got there. I got a lot of accessories there. So we can kind of start with that. Starting with these face gems, I think these were a hundred baht each. We have some hearts, some moons, some sparkles. We have like varying sizes of sparkles. And then I have some teardrops and pearls here. I just thought these would be fun. One of my goals this year is to do more fantasy styling with some of my sewing reveals. So I picked these up for that. Um, and I like that they're like pretty sticky. While at the wholesale mall, I realized I desperately needed a bag to hold all my smaller bags. So I got, hopefully you noticed that it was all in this little pocket and then it's this nice big bag. I'll just keep this in my purse probably when I thrift and stuff like that. I think it'll be really useful for that. They had so many patterns and colors and I think they were like a hundred baht each, which is a little over $3. Let me actually check exactly what it is is yeah so it's just it's 2.98 so we're gonna say three dollars when i spent 100 baht and yeah i thought they were nice and i saw a lot of people actually carrying these around i got these really fun sunglasses these are very silly and impractical actually in seattle having less intense sunglasses is really useful but i thought these were fun with like the sparkles over the eyes i was very tempted there were a lot of sunglasses at this mall but i talked myself into only one pair which i'm pretty pleased with and i think these are absolutely gorgeous i got so many hair accessories at this look at this bow i had such a hard time sticking to just one bow but i thought this one was absolutely gorgeous with the velvet and the sparkles and the tassels uh the salesperson was trying to talk me into one where the tassels like this long and I was like so those would be so cute however sensory it's a no-go I mean of course I couldn't express that because we were not speaking the same language uh the platinum mall not that it's not English speaking friendly but it's definitely less English speaking than other parts because it's definitely kind of more of a like local thing and less of a tourist thing I can't remember what I spent on this bow honestly all of this happened so long ago I don't exactly remember what I spent on everything I do know on these Oh wait, I bought this one in Korea. 
So I have a bunch of hair accessories that I'm about to show you. I know I spent 20 baht on each thing. So let's real quick look at what that is. So 60 cents because this is a wholesale mall. Again, I regret not buying more of these. So these are kind of those like, I forget the name of the brand, but they have these little pearls in them and they look so cute on. I, I wish I kind of got these in a bunch more colors because I've worn them and they just really, for me, up level that ponytail. So I've been absolutely loving these. And then I also got, I got a ton of different claw clips. Actually, I guess I only got two. Wow, look at how restrained I was. Oh, I think it's because I was trying to spend a hundred baht even and I got another hair clip for a friend. So those two pieces plus these two would be a hundred. I thought these little blue strawberries were so cute. I love strawberries, but I don't love red. So anytime I can get a like artificial strawberry color, I absolutely love it. And then we all know I'm a sucker for a rainbow, especially a pastel rainbow like this. Absolutely adorable, so pleased, 10 out of 10. 60 cents each, unbeatable. I will have to show you this close up. I got a cheap little ring, very cute, but uh, you can't really see it that far away. I remember it being cheap, but I don't know how cheap. I bought it with the bow actually from the same vendor. And then that was all the jewelry I did because I got really overwhelmed at the jewelry booths overall. But it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a good like fake engagement ring type thing, which I do wear fake engagement rings sometimes when I travel specifically in the United States because people leave you alone more if you, they think you're engaged. Spooky is currently running around like a maniac. Next up we have some kind of higher end, I guess you could call them hair pieces. So I have this really beautiful one that I'll put again pictures of it close up but it's this like cherry blossom one that has pearls incorporated in it and it's just really pretty and again this is just again I want to kind of start taking some of my makes into a fantasy realm when styling them even though when I wear them in real life they'll feel as fantasy but when I style them for reveals that's the time I can go over the top and so I thought something like this would be really fun I got a bunch of stuff from this vendor I also got it's this really nice like star themed headband again for reveals actually this one I would wear in real life and I would actually wear a lot of these accessories in real life just like not to work. This one here I think is absolutely stunning. I've been looking at pieces like this on Etsy for so long. It's just a little clip you can, or not a clip, but a comb you can like stick in a bun and stuff and it makes it like really fancy looking. All of these were definitely under a thousand baht each. I think they were even under 400 baht, which let me look at what that is. So all of these were about $10 or under, and definitely these are stuff that run more like 40, 30 to $40 on Etsy. This one here is just a like, you can pin it to your hair and it looks like little wheat bits. You can kind of do like a side thing or a back thing. There's kind of a lot of varieties of what you can do with this. I'm not quite sure exactly how to pin it into my hair, but again, this is for, I, I like have a specific thing in mind that I want to wear this with for a reveal. They also came with a pair of clip-on earrings that I probably won't wear. Oh, and I also have some hand sanitizer that I took from um, the fancy hotel in Bangkok. It smells quite nice. And I ha realized I had forgotten to pack my hand sanitizer, so I was quite pumped that the hotel room had them so I could carry those around. We're down to our last little bit. I'm actually, so I have a bunch of clothing and fabric here that I'm going to real quick show you, or not a bunch. I have a little bit. Um, but first, I'm going to show you. This is the one thing I bargained for. It was on accident. I only paid 900 bought for this. Twenty six eighty one. She wanted... 1,795 bought for it, which would have been $53. That's actually wild. This was a kind of my last time in a market where I could spend bought, but when I actually asked her the price and she told me the price, I was not considering it at all. I wasn't even gonna negotiate, but then she insisted I negotiate and I somehow got it down to 900. Purely, I think, because I was fully willing to walk around. It's this beautiful hand-painted teacup. Again, I normally do not bargain in places like this. This was just kind of an accidental bargain, but it's an absolutely stunning teacup and I'm very excited to add it to my collection. I do not normally negotiate or let alone bargain something down by like 50% but you know sometimes life happens and I was in a boat and I was stuck there and she had her hook in the boat and was not gonna let us leave I think until I bought this teacup but I get really flustered in those types of social situations so yeah the floating market was really fun to experience uh, I would not be where I would want to go to shop so here we are um, and it is really 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 beautiful and like I said I am excited to add it to my collection it's also like really nice and heavy feeling the wholesale mall, mall, nobody was trying to convince you to buy anything. In fact, like buying some of this stuff was hard, which reminds me, let's get into the clothing that I bought. So this tank top that I bought was 350 
bought $10.43 in American dollars. So I actually saw somebody walking around, like some, a Thai person walking around with a tank top like this and I absolutely fell in love with it. However, this is not big enough for me. I measured it at the booth, but I, I didn't like factor in the fact that like this metal bit down here doesn't stretch. So it's actually, I can get it on, but it's painful. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is I can see the stitching that puts on this trim. So I think I'm gonna cut this trim off and then wait until I find a black tank top at the thrift store, crop that black tank top and then sew this trim to it. So I will I will still have this and honestly, just the trim itself in the US would probably cost that amount of money. So it's fine. Another kind of fun piece that I bought. I have no idea what I was thinking or how I'm gonna style this, but it's this kind of like, fun sparkly top with feather feather sleeves that I think would look like really cute with like a corset or layered on top of something like a black dress maybe or a pink dress or something. I don't have a full strategy on how I'm going to wear this and I will say while trying to get it on I ripped a seam. I actually do think the seams on this are pretty well done. I just think that sewing through a netting like this is quite challenging and this was 950 bot with about $30. I am happy with it for that price. And I actually think it's funny. I noticed this on The Bachelor. All of these are probably fast fashion, honestly, which is always not my ideal, which is why I was pretty limited in what I bought there. I was also pretty limited in what I could buy there sizing wise. I was actually too big for a lot of the clothing there. So if you are a larger size, definitely like kind of stick to the accessory floors because clothing floors are kind of a bummer. And then this next dress, this was the most expensive thing I bought in Thailand. Well, that's not true. I bought some silk, but we'll, we'll show you that in a second. So this dress was 2,490 baht. It is absolutely stunning. It was actually a Korean brand in this store. Hopefully you can see this. It's very ruffly. It's very pretty. I do not usually go for black, but I felt like the way this does black was quite beautiful. I actually wore this in Korea. It fits really well. It was $75, about US dollars, and I'm pretty, I guess, happy with that price. I also am trying to keep in mind that this is a wholesale mall, so you are paying like the wholesale bottom prices because you're buying directly from, I think the manufacturers is the impression I was under. Hopefully that means the labor was maybe a little bit better than I'm thinking, but I very rarely buy fast fashion and this piece and the sparkly piece will be in my wardrobe a long time and the black tank top, once I pull off the trim, I'll wash the black tank top. Maybe without the trim, it will be wearable for me. We'll see, but I will try to make sure these stay in my wardrobe a long time and are put to good use. Let's talk fabrics. I only bought two yardages of fabrics here. We went to one fabric store. I was trying to be quite particular and careful about buying fabric because I have so much in my stash already. It's funny, I bought two things of kind of the same color. This first one here, I got five meters and it was 180 bought per meter, which was 536. So this was $5.36 per meter. It's this really beautiful eyelet fabric that has flowers in it and is blue and has a really nice like scallop ruffled edge. I thought this would be really pretty for a dress. I have multiple ideas for this. I've actually been kind of looking for a colorful eyelet like this. I'm pretty excited about this. Like this was a more intentional purchase than maybe it would have been a couple of years ago if I was traveling because yeah, I've been looking for a fabric like this even just like in the States and four or $5 a yard. That's pretty insane. Next up, this is about $22 a yard. This is the silk I bought. It's really high quality. It's really quite like it's not sheer. Like if you look at this, I can technically see through it if I hold it up to the light, but uh, I don't feel like it's gonna need an intense lining. Pretty heavyweight silk satin. The shop we went to pretty much only had silk satins and chiffons, and I will not sew a silk with silk chiffon. I think I would rather die. So because of that, I picked up the satin. I have an actual fully plan for this already. I bought it with a pattern in mind because right now I'm working on using the silk from Italy that I bought about a year ago in a project up and coming on this channel. And so I had actually already been researching patterns for satins like this. So I got seven yards of this because I know exactly what I need. I had a pattern exactly in mind for this um, when I saw this color that is going to be absolutely stunning. And we'll probably see this in the fall this year, but I'm very excited about this silk. And at $22 a yard, it's not like it was like extremely cheaper than the US, but it definitely is a little bit cheaper than it would have been if I had ordered it in the US, especially since it's a fairly heavyweight satin. So that was, this was kind of the biggest purchase because seven, seven years at 22, it's definitely the most I spent. I think if I looked at my receipt for the store, I spent $176 when I looked at it on my bank statement. And yeah, I, 
this color is going to be stunning on me. I'm very excited about that silk. It is stunning. It reflects the light. Um, and I knew I wanted to pick up one yardage of silk in Thailand. I knew I wanted to stick to one because silk is like not always the most useful material for me because I like to be able to wash my clothes and be a little bit harder on my clothes. But that wraps up everything I bought in Thailand. I kind of feel like I bought an insane amount. I definitely was more like restrained than I would have been if I had gone about a year or two ago before I started being a little bit more intentional. So yeah, that, that wraps us up. I hope you enjoyed this little haul from Thailand and I will see you in my next video next week, which will be back to a sewing project before the week after where I'm going to have this exact same format of vlog Monday and Wednesday and then a haul on Friday. I can't wait to show you that haul from Korea because I found a basically the wholesale clothing mall version in a fabric mall that was four buildings that were six stories, trims, fabrics, craft supplies, and I am so pumped to show you what I brought back from that as well as other miscellaneous things I picked up there. So definitely stay tuned for that. Subscribe and stick around and of course you can always comment down below and like this video to support my channel and I will see you next time. Bye!